So Professor Powell talked a lot about the ways in which implicit bias you know, interacts with structures in the larger society. And my area, and I think my, my colleagues here as well, my main area of interest is, is in structures. Okay, So how does something that appears innocuous, like a school boundary line, how does that shape experience and break down opportunity and, re and increase racial disparities, for example? So it's important as I'm talking about you know, these individual biases that people people might have or that we might have, and you're thinking in, in these individual terms, to remember that we exist in this larger society that's deeply unequal, and that even if we got rid of magically, the implicit bias god came down and said there are no more implicit bias and prejudices, we would still have outcomes that are unequal, um, broken down by race and ethnicity and income because of these larger structures and because of last, uh, past and present effects of discrimination in our larger society that exists kind of in our laws and our policies. So. So what do we know about um, school discipline? Um, black, and, I, and I assume that a lot of people know that there are racial disparities in discipline. I mean, this has been um, a very prominent issue within education. But when you start to think about implicit bias and the effect of individual bias and decision makers, on these outcomes, it's really important to pay attention to, to look at it on a more granular, granular level instead of just looking at the larger statistics. What we know is that black and Latino children, and this is particularly true of black males, are punished more severely than white students for exactly the same offenses. And there's no reduction in this disparity, whether it's a black teacher, a Latino teacher, a white teacher. This exists across a lot of different school types and a lot of different types of and, and environments. 